LinkedIn presents. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Patty Phillips and Jack Phillips about showing the value of what you do. Patty Phillips and Jack Phillips, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have both of you with me today. You're joining me from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about showing the value of what you do. Uh, This is a challenging thing for a lot of people. I will put myself in that camp. I I struggle with the, the, the idea of self promotion and, you know, making things about me, especially when they're team efforts. Um, And so on the one hand, you know, we want to be able to, to tell a compelling story about our capabilities and what we can do for organizations and for teams. Um, On the other hand, I know a lot of people self feel self-conscious about it. Um, And so finding a way to do it effectively and authentically, I think is really important. And I'm excited to really dive into this and explore uh, with you based on all of your experience and insights on how we can do this effectively. As we get started, I wanted to briefly share a little bit about Patty and Jack with the listeners. Patty Phillips is a consultant and researcher for workshops and conference presentations, inspire audiences to align their work with outcomes that matter. When she's not consulting with clients, researching, or writing books, she supports the work of other organizations through board service. And I could go on and on on Patty's background, but I'm going to pause there for a moment. Jack Phillips is an award-winning thought leader in the field of talent development. As a teacher, consultant, and coach, he helps individuals show the value of their work in all types of organizations. He has taught his proprietary methodology to over 50,000 professionals and managers in over 70 countries. And again, I could go on and on with Jack's accomplishments as well, but I'm going to pause there for both of you and just give you a chance to share anything else, highlight anything about your background or personal context before we dive on into the topic for today. And again, we appreciate the opportunity to, to be here with you. And in terms of my background, I think you hit the high, high points. Um, I did it in a previous life, spend some time in corporate America. And then for the past 25, almost actually almost 30 years, Jack and I have worked together in our business, ROA Institute, to help individuals and organizations demonstrate the value of their work. Yeah, Patty serves as CEO. I serve as chairman of the board. We have about 100 consultants. We work globally through partners. Uh, we're operating in 70 countries. Our books, we have over 100 books these days, and their books in 38 languages. This is truly a global process that we're talking about here. Uh, so it's good to be with you. We, we're just happy to share what we do with uh, all of you listening today. Yeah, thank you for that. You really have accomplished so much. Your reach is tremendous. And again, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to share your experiences with us. So why don't we start by just talking through why it's so important to be able to show the value of what you do um, as the general kind of foundational premise for this entire dialogue. Why is that important? I think it begins with the, the limited resources people have to invest in us, not just us individuals, but our teams and our companies and our organizations. So fundamentally, we have limited resources. So if we can demonstrate value of what we do in an objective way, trying to remove some of the subjectivity, and in terms of outcomes, not activities, um, I think those people who invest in us um, will see more reason to continue investing. So the whole idea is, let's get away from talking about how busy we are, because we're all busy, everyone's busy, um, and really look at the accomplishments and the outcomes that we're driving. Let me add to this. Um In today's climate, this is particularly critical. 
uh, there's a lot of talk about how the big companies have chosen people for layoff and there are big layoffs around, as you've seen. Um, and so here's a consensus um, recently reported in the Wall Street Journal. First, it's your recent performance that makes a difference. If that's good, you stand a better chance of not being laid off. And if your salary is higher, you have a chance of being laid off even more because they're trying to reduce the cost of the salaries. And also the, the value of your work, if you're in a critical area, uh, it's more valuable to them. So the value of what you do. So let's put that in a process if we could. So just think about the work that we do and it fits the success that we're describing here. If you look at the work and how we've evaluated people in work, it's all started with attitude. That is how we react to it and how people react to us. Hey, we like people who've got a great attitude. They've got a good work ethic. But obviously that is superseded by the next level and that's how much do they know? Credentials, certifications, degrees, um, experience. Hey, hey, that's what we need. But that's what we've learned. We call it learning to do the job. And then there's actually doing the job, following through, uh, doing tasks and follow up and processes, communicating. That's doing, doing, doing. We call that application because we're applying what we know in the job. Well, that's the basis of a lot of performance reviews, and that is how we do things. But more importantly, and what's now the key thing is the consequence of that. That's impact. That's the projects we've completed, the sales that we've made, the, the coding that we've done, you know, it's whatever we're doing, it's the impact of that. And the broad categories of that is productivity, quality, time, and cost. Most of the measures can fit into those four categories. So that's the key thing these days, making sure we show the impact. But now what, what the newspapers and the experts are telling us, it's really the ROI, the next level, that's really the decision maker. You see, if we push that to the next level of, of the value of your work, it's the monetary benefits of what you do compared to the co your cost, the fully loaded salary. And just think about it, it goes into a calculation like the benefit cost ratio of our work would be benefits divided by costs. Benefits in monetary terms divided by the cost, fully loaded salary cost. So if I'm getting more work done, my performance now is I'm getting more work done. Hey, that's more money for the numerator. If it can overcome my de the salary, I'm delivering a positive ROI. So as strange as it seems, the layoffs are made, basically made on what's your ROI. Again, if you've got a higher salary, you've got to have more value delivered to cover that salary for them to keep you. Now, I'm not suggesting that we're calculating ROI on everyone's work, but we see a trend in that. In our own work, we've had requests from a lot of people in recent years saying, look, I need to add another person here. Can you show me? And my boss is saying, I got to see the ROI of this additional person. Can you show me? And we have, and you can, but it takes a little work and some assumptions along the way. So I just wanted to, to look at that in the context of what's going on now. So the best way to become to, to keep from becoming a, a layoff statistic is to have a higher ROI for whatever you do. Yeah, well, that's interesting, and it all makes sense. Uh, though I do wonder how how calculated um, leaders are in organizations when they're making those decisions. I I think, for example, the uh, the Twitter debacle with with uh, Elon Musk, and I I don't see much evidence of him going through any systematic process whatsoever. No. <laughs> that was just no. it, it, to me, it seemed like nonsense. Um, but that's, that's probably more the exception <clears throat> rather than the rule. And I would expect that in most places, there would be some sort of mech, you know, some sort of process, some sort of mechanism to, to evaluate people and make some, some good decisions. Um, but it is, it is challenging because on the one hand, you're saying people who are like 
great performers, top performers, but also you can't be making as much as other people. Otherwise you're in danger. So you have to like do a lot for not very much um, to be able to <laughs> show your value. And then what you have to add on top of that, the the layer of just organizational politics, there are plenty of people that don't do very much, but they convince everyone around them that they do a lot. Right. And yeah. so they artificially inflate their perceived value. Um, and so balancing like actual productivity and value versus perceived value and how you navigate that, I think is also, a, a, it adds a, a level of messiness and nuance to, to how we calculate all this. Right. Yeah, yeah, it does. And you break up a good point. See, I, I, I would agree with you. Those people make assumptions about what a person does and the value of that compared to their salary. Uh, and that could be a very flawed assumption. So our advice is don't let someone else make that assumption. Take the initiative to show the value of what you do, but do it in very credible ways. That is, make sure you have impact measures that are clearly there and you're sorting out what you've, your work has had its influence that and be conservative in converting that to money. Now you've shown your value. So you don't wait for someone to make that decision you put it in front of them in a factual, credible way saying, here's what I've done. And it's usually not just my pure work. It's usually a project we've implemented, a new new program, a new initiative, something that we've done um, where we can connect that. And most people we work with are in that uh, frame of mind. You know, maybe they're coaching someone, maybe they're a consultant providing a process, maybe they're a project manager, maybe they're a leader of a team and they the team is, is delivering results. So so we, we want to be proactive in this and not leave that assessment to someone's mind and assumption that may be biased or really not not given enough attention. Yeah. And John, to your point, you know, that assessment of value is also also um, it's, it's often based on the denominator, right? The cost of the person, so the salary. And so if we can't describe what we do or the benefits of what we do, that's where the decision will be made because that's clearly, I can see it, cut the cost. I was having a conversation recently from someone out of an HR function, and she said there is no way we can really demonstrate the benefit of what we do, what we're doing. I said, and that is why executives will look at that cost of support organizations like HR and talent development, because when you're talking about the activity of what you do and all they see is that cost, that's an easy target for them. And so if we can't come up with the benefits, we have to think about, well, what is the risk of us going away? What are the consequences of me not doing this work? And flip it just a little bit to see if that benefit shows up. So, you know, we've got to think more about the busyness of what we do. It's the so what of what we do. What are we really contributing? And I think a lot of this has to do with our performance management process within organizations too, because the way they have been designed in the past has all been about activity or very subjective measures um, of performance. So we need to get more objective in our performance. And like Jack said, really define some outcomes that we're looking to drive that add value back to the organization. And that values money, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's value in a different way. So we look at that ROI clear, clear, clearly, excuse me, as a formula, benefits compared to cost, but we also look at the intangible benefits too. The, the intangibles had value, but it's just difficult to get there credibly with a reasonable amount of time. So we leave it as an intangible. And so we let people put that, it, uh, let them decide the value of that intangible. But we put for the ROI calculation, it's going to be tangible. So we put it in there. And so I just want to underscore what Patty's saying there. Um, if you take HR, you know, um, the Amazon, I think it was um, one, uh, maybe Boeing or Amazon, one one uh, uh, report said that 2,000 people they were laying off primarily in HR and finance. And so HR is a target for this a lot. And when a person says we can't show the value of what they do, um, they they really hadn't looked very much. We one of our books it was a bestseller for the Society for Human Resource Management published by them is called Proving the Value of HR, and you can show the value if you don't put value in front of them for your outcome of your work, but you got the cost staring them in the face. That's what they're going to look at. 
Yeah. And they'll make an assumption about your value, and it's going to be flawed, as you point out, or certainly inaccurate. So we say get in there and, and show the value of your projects and your programs and your systems and your initiative and so forth before you have to. And then the other part of what we we focus on is showing the value and not being afraid to recognize that, well, maybe the value is not what it should be. What can I do to improve? So when mm-hmm. we're talking about showing the value, it's not just about demonstrating your value. It's about creating value by learning from what you're doing, what you're accomplishing and what you're not and how you can do more to create that additional value. So it's, you know, you have to have a little bit of a thick skin to, and you know, a desire to look in the mirror sometimes, and it's scary, but let's just take a look at what we're doing, what we're contributing, and how that aligns with where the organization or where our clients are going. Yeah, and I, I really want to drill in more on this uh, idea of credibly showing the value. Um, and, it, you know, the old saying, uh, I'm going to mess this up, but essentially what matters can't be measured and what is measured doesn't matter, um, that that old expression it it really is true when you talk about uh, metrics in a lot of organizations, the various KPIs uh, that that are used. I mean, it, you have to do something. You have to choose certain metrics and you have to follow them. Um, but so much of what leads to successful teams and successful organizations and innovative products and services, you know, to bring value to the market, it depends on things that are really hard to quantify those intangible aspects. And so then you have to find ways to credibly demonstrate those aspects because they're not as easily quantifiable. Um, so let's talk more about that. Like, how do we go about showing the, you know, what we're doing in a credible way that's going to make sense to maybe board members or or C-suite executives sitting around the table looking at, you know, a, a balance sheet and, and trying to reconcile, you know, revenue versus expense. Part of it begins with the logic and the presentation. So as Jack said, we look at things in terms of a chain of impact. So we invest in a program, a project, or initiative, or an individual. So what is the overall perception of that work? What are people actually learning? How is that helping the organization develop capability or gain capability and skill that they need for the future? Um, What are people doing differently? And how is that contributing? What are the consequences of their doing it differently? So reporting things and speaking in terms of a chain of impact in specific terms, you know, specificity drives results. Vega Nebulous is going to get us Vega Nebulous every time. So I think part of it is let's think about this chain of impact. Don't be so proud of all the activity and how much you're spending, but you know, what are the results? Even if it's we're delivering something that's relevant to our customers based on blank or Things have changed based on these measures, the best that you can get to. But it starts with that logic, that logical flow of information and how we communicate it. Because a lot of times the value is there. It's just in the way we present the value in those vague nebulous terms or without that logical, critical look at information flows. I'll give a couple examples. Um, Engagement. Uh, Executives invest in engagement because they don't like the image of their employees disengaged. And when people talk about the disengagement that's going on, particularly from Gallup in their work, uh, you, you, you want to invest in ways to get people engaged. So there's a lot of, of investment in that area. It's about getting people to have goals and have responsibility for goals and be a good team member and share um, results with everyone and support each other. You know, you want them to to connect to the organization, belong to the organization, and have pride in the organization. So, what does all that mean? If that's that's usually captured in an engagement score. So, engagement goes up, and it gets to so what, as you say. Well, engagement is one of those things that's connected quite clearly to productivity, like gross. Uh, the pro- uh, gross productivity, revenue per, that's revenue per employee. It connects to retention. It, cus- it connects to customer satisfaction. It connects to quality, even safety. So that if we can show that connection, show that value. 
So in essence, we, we're, what we're doing is getting people more engaged to drive productivity and to drive the quality of their work. Um, and also have a, such a great place to work that we keep them there. That's retention. And that's a huge issue these days. So what we're trying to do is connect those softer things to something um, harder and it's easier to um, measure, not measure, but convert to money value. So we can do that. Uh, just think about culture as another example. We work a lot these days in culture. People want to know. So we've been working in culture for you know, three, three, three years now. Uh, what difference has it made? Well, they they seem to know some, see some things that point to that. But the the key issue, you want the credibility of that connection. So we we just completed one culture implementation where it actually drove the productivity. That's revenue per employee, and we and we got the people involved to tell us what percent of that improvement is actually connected to the culture. It also. Uh, connected to turnover. Turnover is down because of the culture. Uh, and again, we got a connection to that so we can see how much goes to that. Um, and we've got um, time savings. That is, they're more efficient with their work. They're actually saving time. We get a monetary value for that. So we're trying to, to take the hard to value uh, concepts and convert them to money so we can see that. And that's kind of the, the trend that we see there. The executives, yes, they believe in these intangibles and they want to uh, do things to support that. But at the same time, they'd like to see something that they can appreciate. And that's the value adding money to terms. Yeah. Money helps them understand a problem and see a great opportunity. Well, I note the time. Uh, I'm going to have to let you both go here in just a minute. I realize we just scratched the surface here. There's so much more to explore, um, but you also have lots of great resources and books uh, that we can refer people to, to learn more. So as we start to wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience, how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, where they can find your work, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Well, thank you, John. So you can find us at www.royinstitute.net. And then you can certainly email either Jack or myself at Jack, J-A-C-K at ROIinstitute.net or Patty, P-A-T-T-I at ROIinstitute.net. But then also you can find our books on Amazon. And so the new book, Show the Value of What You Do, is probably the simplest book of all the books. Many of our books are very technical, um, but it's the simplest book. And it does cover a variety of different types of programs and people and where they work and how they're demonstrating value of what they do. So that may be a good good starting place for people who are just getting into it. Yes, I'd, I'd like to add this. That book is, uh, is very uh, engaging. It's got uh, of 20 stories of how this methodology has helped individuals with their own work and their own career, and in some cases, life-changing for them. It, it it reads. It's only 150 pages. Lots, and it's very short on the numbers, which often frightens people. But it's in there, but just not so much of it. So here's our commitment to you: If you get that book from Amazon, show the value of what you do. And if you're not happy with it, keep the book. Send us a note, Jack at roiinstitute.net, and tell us what you got invested in the book, including the shipping, and we'll send you a check for that amount. No questions asked. Patty and Jack, it has been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what your team can do for them. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support.
Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.